Hello, and welcome to Messages of Revival Podcast. This is Basil Hound Brown. It's good to have you back with us today. I'm going to jump right into the teaching. It's out of the book of Galatians, chapter 3, and verse 13. I'll begin to read the scripture out of the King James Version. Verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, what is the curse of the law? The curse of the law is threefold. It's poverty, sickness, and death. That's what it is. The curse of the law is poverty, sickness, and death. And death is really really physical death, spiritual death, and eternal death. So God's word is saying this. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The Amplified Bible says Christ purchased our freedom, redeemed us from the curse or the doom of the law and its condemnation. By he himself becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree or who is crucified. So listen to this carefully. What Jesus did on the cross of Calvary by hanging on the cross for us, he took away that curse and he carried that curse upon himself so that today you and I can live free from the curse of the law, which is poverty. Many people sign up for poverty. They don't realize that Jesus paid that uh, you know, price on the cross of Calvary. Sickness, he paid that price on the cross of Calvary. There's many people signing up for sickness. And then, of course, death, which is a physical death. Listen, all of us are going to die sometime. But let me, let me make this statement. You don't have to die because you're sick. You can die because you're well. Hello, that's not the way we get to heaven. Oh, I have to get some kind of a sickness so my body can die so that I can go to be with Jesus. No, no, you can make arrangements and go at the right time and you can leave healthy. Hello, but that's another whole teaching all by itself. So let me move on here. So we got the physical death. Then we got the spiritual death, which that means we are in, we are in, in no communication or no contact with God Almighty, with Jesus, and with the Holy Spirit. And then, of course, we've got eternal death, which talks about eternity, the lake of fire, hell, and, and being cast out of the presence of God forever and ever and ever. That's the eternal death. But Christ has redeemed us. So we don't have to experience that poverty, sickness, and death. We don't have to experience it because He took it upon Himself. Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. Now into verse 14, it says, uh, To the end that through their receiving Christ Jesus, the blessed promise to Abraham uh, might come upon the Gentiles, so that we through faith might all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit. So listen to this carefully. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, It's made available to us the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, who by faith we receive. Everything that we do with God Almighty is by faith, by faith, because we do not see it in the natural realm. We have to go by faith. We have to trust God with every fiber of our being. And so so we receive by faith the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit. We can walk and live in divine health, divine prosperity, and eternal life. We know without a shadow of a doubt that if we die, we're going to be with Jesus Christ. That's it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We, we, in fully, uh, we have this revelation um, knowing that we know that we know without a shadow of a doubt. And that's where you have to get yourself to by spending time in the Word, knowing what the Bible says, getting this revelation. Of course, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God's raised Him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. Now, if we go over into verse 29, and we're going to talk about the promise, because we've talked about the curse, poverty, sickness, and death. Now, we're going to talk about the promise in verse 29. It says, and if you belong to Christ, are in him, 
who is Abraham's seed, then you are Abraham's offspring, listen to this, and spiritual heirs according to the promise. So we, as believers, are spiritual heirs. We have an inheritance. We are spiritual heirs according to the promise. And the promise is threefold. As the curse was threefold, so the promise is threefold. And the promise is this. Number one, spiritual blessing. Number two, physical blessing. And number three, which could be very controversial in a lot of circles, but it's financial and material blessings. People have this idea that when we get to heaven one day, that everything is going to be wonderful. I mean, we'll have no burdens to bear. Listen, I am totally in fully agreement with that. When we get over to heaven, if you have one leg, you'll have two. If you have one eye, you'll have two. You'll be made whole. You'll have no more sickness, no more disease, no more poverty, no more lack, no more depression. I mean, all of that's gone. You'll be living in a perfect environment in heaven. Perfect. But what do we do from now until we get there? Live in poverty, lack, depression, sickness, disease? Hello? Is that, is that the life of a born-again child of God, a child of a king? If we are, are the child of a king, then we are heirs to the throne, and we are, we are walking under the, the protection of the king. We are walking under the provision of the king. Hello? Are you all with me out there? Spiritual blessing, physical blessing, and then financial and material blessing. If you belong to Christ, or in, who, in him who is Abraham's seed, then you are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise. So we have a promise, folks. Spiritual blessing, physical blessing, financial blessing. Down here on this earth. Preparation for heaven. Hallelujah. We're not living under the curse, but we're living under the promise. And we have the precious Holy Spirit who is a gift to us, who has been given to us and we receive him by faith. And then we are led by the Spirit of God on a daily basis. Everything we do, we trust God that we are taking the right step in the right direction that he would lead us and guide us. These are good times we're living in, folks, as long as we get connected with God Almighty. We get connected with His will and His purpose. I'm telling you right now, God will take you over the top. The wheels of the unrighteous and the unjust and those that would come against God are going to fall off. We already see that happening with some very prominent people in the United States of America. The wheels are already falling off. The confusion in the camp is already there. Exposure is already happening. You cannot come against God. You cannot speak against God and get away with it. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't happen that way. And as crazy as it gets out in the world, and I keep saying that to the church, with inside of the church, with inside of the body of Christ, with inside of those that would serve God with every fiber of their being, it's going to become blessed. It's going to become uh, 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 anointed. It's going to become provision. I mean, God's going to do all of this stuff with inside of the church, with inside the body of Christ, with inside of those that would serve Him with every fiber of their being. And listen, folks, we're going over the top. We are not going to fail, but we're going over the top. God has a plan, and the plan is in His Word. Grab a hold of it and let God do a work through your life, in your life, and then let Him work through you so that you can be a blessing to others. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this teaching here today because we're not living under the curse, but we're living under the promise. And we have the Word of God as our foundation. God's on the throne. The Bible says Jesus is on His right hand, praying, making intercession for you and I. Right now, as I speak, He's praying for you. He's making intercession for you. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, dwells on the inside of us. The Bible says our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of us. 
And everywhere we go, He leads us, He guides us, He comforts us, protects us. Hallelujah. All I can see is victory. Victory, victory, victory. I pray that this teaching has helped you today. Don't look at the sickness. Don't look at what they're telling you out there in the world. Don't focus on all that stuff, but focus on the Word. Focus on the promise. Focus on God Almighty, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Be led by the Spirit of God today, and you'll see God will turn that which is impossible. He'll make it possible. Hallelujah. Thanks for joining us today. Please like and share this, this uh, podcast. Let others know. Get the word out for us, and we appreciate you. We love you, and God bless you so much. If you don't know Jesus and need to rededicate your life right now, pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I confess right now that Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. Take out the hardened heart and give me a heart of flesh. Change me, Lord. Let me never be the same again. I repent and turn from my ways. I make you Lord of my life right now. Use me, Lord, in these days we are in. I am ready for your coming and always will be. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul and setting me free. Amen. Now, if you pray this prayer, I would love to hear from you. So please email me at revivalpodcasthb at gmail.com. God bless you. Thank you for listening to Messages of Revival Podcast. For more, subscribe to Messages of Revival Podcast on Anchor, Google Podcast, and iTunes. And share this podcast with somebody that needs to be uplifted and blessed. God bless you.